Today is opening day of the 2024 Epcot International Food and Wine Festival, and we have come out today to try a bunch of food, enjoy some drinks, take in all that opening day energy, and bring you guys along with us. Let's go. So here we are at the new Macetizer. So this is all mac and cheese. We're gonna try out two of them. Um, they have a standard mac and cheese, they have a cheesesteak mac and cheese, a truffle mac and cheese, and they have a vegan mac and cheese. So we're gonna go with the cheesesteak and the truffle, and then they have a nice little wine flight that we're gonna check out as well. So I'm really excited to kick off the day at some place we've absolutely never been before. I know, well it just opened up earlier this year, these weren't open, but uh, we're excited to try it out. I know, it's great. And then the other, so half of it, they have some tables. I really kind of thought they would have more tables in here, but the whole second half is a shop. So you can do a little shopping over here as well. All right, so here we are at Macetizer's, and we've got the truffle mac and cheese. It's a little bit dry. Yeah, this one. And I'm expecting uh, it to be a little more creamy, but. Yeah, we'll I feel see. like we kind of got oh. the tail end of a of a batch. This is the truffle. It smells oh. really good. Nope. Yep. Like I'm getting all the truffle scents all the way over here. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was the tail end of it. Dry. I'm so bummed because it looks like it has all the makings of being really delicious if you don't get sort of the end one. I don't know if you can see, but it's almost like the cheese is broken a little bit. And um, I don't know, but the crunchy top, the mushrooms or the, you know, truffles as I suppose they're trying to pretend, I don't know what, but the truffle aroma looks great. And the cheese color is beautiful. Like it looks like it's not orange, you know? Right. But yep. it's dry. It is dry. How's so, the flavor and like we've talked about it before, like mac and cheese, a really good staple. It's really hard to get it right. Like it can be, yeah. it can I, dry out really quick. It can heal really quick. It can do a lot of different things really quick. So it'll this like one, it'll like break. Almost. This one felt victim to either being the end of a batch or sitting too long. But that's a disappointment. Okay, I'm gonna try the cheese steak mac and cheese, which is interesting. You know, it's gonna be like you know mac and cheese with stuff on top a of it, which beef. is always yep. sort of the fun thing. Which, hey, I'm a fan of it. Let's have it, right? Mm. That's a great flavor. Okay. That's oh. the creaminess of the cheese and stuff. It could be a little creamier, but... So if you think about, like, a Philly cheesesteak, you're not expecting it to be, like, dripping. I mean, it is, you know, with, like, whiz and such with cheese. This almost feels like that. Like, it tastes like you're eating a cheesesteak sandwich. I'd say mix it all together because I started to mix it together. The meat has great flavor. Like it actually tastes like, you know, a really cheesesteak meat. Has a lot of vegetables in here, a lot of breadcrumbs and such that give it a crunch for a texture change. Yeah, it's really good. I feel like if you get a really good fresh one, this is going to be a good fun try. I don't think it's like the greatest thing that we're going to have today by any stretch of the imagination. But I think it's nice that they're having something like this because it brings in sort of like picky eaters and folks who aren't necessarily looking to try, you know, the escargot over in France, but they want to try something a little bit different um, that still fits within a comfort zone. And, and this suits that. It suits it really well. So give it a try and see what you think. All right. All right. I'll try to get a good bite of everything here. Like the flavor's right there, huh? Wow, yeah. Flavors are all there. Kind of the, the beef, the peppers, the onions, the real nature of a Philly cheesesteak. I think they really did a good job capturing it. I think it was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it could be better if it was, like you said, fresh, a little more cheesy, but... Mm-hmm. I think this one's a win. Yep. We're going to give this one a winning star. We're going to let Annabelle try it. Okay, so they have two different wine flights that you can get here at Macetizers. I chose the second one, which was a little bit more expensive. It was $14. It has the cutest little glasses and a little holder. I'm telling you, this is like 
boating, RVing, happy, joy. Look at these little adorable glasses. And they're all plastic. It's so cute. I want to take it home. So adorable. So first off here on my flight, I've got the Knightsbridge Sauvignon Blanc. It's from Sonoma, California. Secondly over here from France, I've got a rosé. All right. That looks way better. And then lastly, I have a Camus, which is what sold me on getting this particular flight. A Camus Cabernet Sauvignon, the 50th anniversary from Napa, California. Manny went back, and what a difference. Yeah, what a difference. You can see... Well, you can see it just looks You can see creamy. the cheese that's on there and creamy. Oh. Night and day. Yeah. Like that, like, yeah. So that's a lesson, right? It's like, I yeah. don't take back stuff just because you're going to be a jerk, but ours was truly cold it was and really, dry. Like you really can just rough. tell. I mean, look at the difference. And you watch our stuff. You know we don't like this, take stuff back. We don't take back anything. This one is like, the cheese is broken and dry. This one is creamy and beautiful. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but big difference. Big difference. The Here, color. Try this. Annabelle's been picking at this one. They, they let us keep it, I guess. Well, they couldn't take it back. Oh, I they guess couldn't touch true. it. All right, let me try this. I've been very excited to try this because I love anything truffle, and I love cheese, and I love macaroni. So, oh, it's so creamy. It's really nice. It has, you know what's interesting? The smell of the truffle, the aromatics off of it are so strong and lovely. I was a little worried that it was going to have that artificial truffle flavor that, like sometimes when you get truffle fries, they like punch you in the face with the truffle. Not that I'm complaining, but this is very subtle. Oh. Like the flavor in my mouth, yeah. it's there and I'm getting it, but it's not bowling me over. So. If you're not sure by the scent that you think it's going to be too strong, taste it. Because the taste is definitely more subtle than the scent. So this is a huge win. So it's double wins at Macetizers. I'm so excited because I was really sad to start off our day with such a bummer. I know. I was bummed. But not a good start now. I think that's the first time we've ever sent anything back. It really is. <laughs> but it was, it was a good lesson. And it was the right thing to do. All right. I think sometimes it's easy to forget that food and wine is not just about the food, but also the wine. Each different booth is going to have some sort of drinks that accompany your food. Um, and in theory, they should be things that pair well with or are from the region. Like once we get in the World Showcase, you know, in France, you're going to have French options, so on and so forth, right? So here at Macetizers, I've got the little mini wine flight. First up, I have Knightsbridge Sauvignon Blanc, and this is from Sonoma, California. It has been a minute since I've had white wine. This is a Sauvignon, it's very nice. It is not, um, it's it's everything I like well, in a Sauvignon Blanc, which crisp. by the way, yeah. Of all of the whites, Sauvignon Blanc is my favorite. So this is really tasty. I like this one a lot. All right, next up is the Rosé. Sweet. Yeah, it's interesting. It almost tastes like, this is gonna sound terrible, it tastes like sometimes in the summer because I not, like red wine. I'm not sure you could offend a rosé. A lot of people love rosé, and I don't mind rosé, but this truly tastes like um, I'll have like a glass of red wine, and it'll just get hot because it's hot out, and I'll put an ice cube in it, and the ice melts. This tastes like red wine that somebody let the ice melt in. Not that you should put white ice in your wine, but I'm talking about what like you, just what is this? Look, I'm just telling you the truth. That's what it tastes like. I'm not, I'm not admitting to anything. Well, why would that, well, how do you know that reference? I'm just saying some people might do these things. Oh, some people. They might. I don't do it. I would never. I mean, that's like so like classless. It tastes exactly like that, like watered down. But you would never do that. So you wouldn't know exactly what that tastes like. No. This is the whole, this is the whole reason. I know. Dude, Why I didn't you just, just get a cup of that? that? Did you see that? My finger I hit it. I would have just got went. a cup of that. I should have, but I wanted to do the little, I'm here for the experience, hello, of trying things, all right? So, this it's the Camus? is the Camus 50th anniversary Cabernet Sauvignon. Ah, so okay. So excited. This is delicious. You won't like it though. Oh no, I like it. No, I don't think you'd like it. I do like red wines. Mm -hmm. You can have the rosé. You tastes... won't like this one. It's 
not good at all. It's terrible. That one's really good. All right, go ahead. I'll let all you right. have some. So I'm gonna take one for the team. Apparently this is horrible. It's so good. It's just so smooth and lovely. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That is super nice. If you don't like it, I'll finish this for you. No, I, I like it. So this is a lobster tail, and what kind of, it was a... Uh, warm water lobster. A warm water lobster tail with just garlic butter. So I saw this, very simple. I was very excited There's a, about it. Yeah, I like the idea of that charred lemon too. Yeah, and I put a little bit of lemon on there. A little bit caramelized. Grab a bite, put it in the butter. Watch that butter. You feeling the coastal vibes? <laughs> wow. That is really good. A very good lobster for a booth. Well, in general. In general. I mean, it's cooked just right. It's not overly cooked, which can turn it chewy and whatnot. Um, and then that butter flavor, just kind of such a great complement to that, an actual buttery flavor of the lobster itself. So, very good. And then. Hey. I didn't pick up, I put the lemon on there, I didn't pick it up, but nice. it's a great, great bite. I want to try this. All right, there's three shrimp. Oh, let me get the... Oh, yes. A little bit of the cocktail. Hopefully there's some horseradish in there. Let's see, but this that's is a like big a big shrimp. shrimp. It's yeah, a very big even shrimp. Annabella's like, Annabella's like, that's a big old shrimp. I don't know if you can hear her. Mm. That's like two. That's like two put together. Mm. <laughs> That's very good. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. The cocktail sauce does have a little bit of horseradish in it. Nice. You can pick up. Shrimp is nice and got a good bounce to it and really good flavor. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. It's really good, isn't it? I really enjoyed it. That's really impressive. I definitely, because I added that bit more of the lemon, got a beautiful, like, lemon butter, heavenly flavor on there. And then, you're right, the butter is just perfectly done. Yep. Um, but I like that you're getting the sweetness of the lobster. It really is coming yeah. through. And for me, my texture, it was just really tender really lovely which was surprising because i had a hard time kind of getting it out of the shell and so i felt like it was going to be tough because it it didn't just fall out of the shell but it wasn't it wasn't at all it was very very tender just just what you want that sort of splash very very good i mean look it's not a giant main lobster up in you know bar harbor but it's really really tasty i highly recommend snagging that it was well worth it, it is I, good. I, so if they can keep that consistency up on that that's going to be a hit all year, all, all season. So excited about that. All right, next. I'm going to do right. Choose wisely. Shrimpy friend. I don't even think I can eat this in one bite. Come on, you can do it. Get the tail. Oh. Oh, pro. Pro. Bring back the Chesapeake. That's the best shrimp I've had in a long time. I don't think you need to try to eat it in one bite. You can take bites of it. Because it was so tender and so good. And just kind of make your way through it. With the cocktail sauce, you're right. It's not a sweet cocktail sauce, which I like. Um, it, has a, it has a nice rounded out flavor to it. I wouldn't call it like a hot one. No, I wish it had a little bit more kick you, to it. You can pick up the but, horseradish But you can it. pick up that, there, that it's there, for sure. But it's not overwhelming it. 
which is exactly what they want to do in a situation it's like a this. It's very well balanced. You want it to be exactly a well balanced. It's got just the right amount of fire and just the right amount of sweet to make it a perfect complement. Yep. I'm going to say though, I think one of the greatest things besides nailing the cook on both of these pieces of seafood is that charred lemon. Adding that charred lemon just pops. It's like adding the salt, you know what I mean, to something. It just is popping all the flavors all the way around. Love both of these. Big, big fan. Right on. So next, I got the cotter, which is a little like a cape cotter, okay? Cape so cotter. A little cocktail. But it's pomegranate. This is a pomegranate cape cotter. Look at the size of this. I feel like this is this is a full size cocktail. Like this isn't a, a taster. <laughs> mm. Wow. It's got a little bit of sweet at first, but it finishes. It finishes like like I'm getting the alcohol. I'm I'm there impressed with this. I'm impressed with this little guy. This feels like I am. This is like sitting You're on at a the boat. coastal kitchen. Yeah, like this is like out boating right here. Like this, the whole thing. Not, not tropical, like, like you would think, like boating, like light, crisp, fresh, and hitting you with the alcohol. Oh, this is a great win. Nice. Yeah, I like this a lot. I just have to laugh because we're both like, just, you know, be pretty snazzy over here. Coming on down. Yeah. And then look at me. I've cut. Hey, when you know, you know, right? So first off, we have this amazing corned beef. This is going to be from Flavors from Fire. We watched them make this. Now they did sub because they ran out of the house-made chips. We do have the, um, Truffle chips. Truffle kettle chip, yeah. Yeah, but we watched them. They put like the cheese on, like a almost like a crumbled cheese on the chips, and then they put the hot corned beef on top of that, topped with the melted cheese, then the um, onions and the chives. And yeah, it pickled looks... red onions. Mm. Pickled red onions, is that right? Okay. That's what it looks like. Oh, yes. And then, bam bam. Bum, bum. Look at this slider. This is no joke. So this is, Nanny, can you find it and read it for us? What exactly? Yep. Look at that cheese. Yep. It's what, the hickory slider or the... Uh, this is a this steakhouse, is the steakhouse slider. blended burger. So beef and wild mushroom slider with truffle brie cheese fondue, arugula... Wait a minute, wait a minute. What? Truffle brie Are cheese you fondue. Kidding That's me? like... The three most favorite words in the vocabulary. I'm like, you gotta in say Terryland. that again. Truffle brie cheese fondue. Yeah, we find that Arugula. Oh, baby, bring and it. And truffle potato chips. All on a sesame seed bun, baby. Yep. Let's go. And then look at the surprise. So Manny was like, what are you having me order? What? This is called a swine brine. What's in here, Bear? So it's a Jim Bean bourbon apple cinnamon cider lemon juice and Dijon mustard and it comes with a little pig wing yeah he said Dijon mustard I said Dijon mustard yeah it's in so there I'm a and little... it comes with a piggy wing and this is not frozen it's on the rocks and it is cute and I looked it up honestly before we came because I'd never heard of what this drink was this is like a thing this is an actual well thing. now we're doing a thing and and it said on the website like when I just looked up what is a swine bride it says comes with a piggy wing huh. and on the on the description I didn't notice it saying that Yet, when she gave it to you, boom. Yeah, it didn't have it on the description, so anyway, beware if first. you're worried about... Yeah, if you're not a meat you're not a, you're not uh, a meat, meat on yeah. the bone or a vegan or yeah, yeah. something of that nature. Well, why don't you try that before the ice melts, right, and then see. we'll dig in all this other yummy stuff. I'm curious about that Dijon mustard. Huh. Okay, well, that's very interesting. <laughs> I don't know. That's code for Manny saying, not for me. Yeah. That's you can interesting. Kind of pick up a hint of the mustard, but just enough of a hint to know you're drinking bourbon with mustard. So. <laughs> so what do you think the goal of this drink is? I don't know. Oh. Let me taste it. Okay. I don't want that piggy wing. Our child is falling to the ground over here. Here, I'll, I'll try the pig wings. Hold this for me. Wow. 
that's wild because I don't taste any one of the ingredients in that. It's like they all came together and created their own different taste. Huh. You say mustard, and I feel like I'm trying to, like I, I can feel that there's a tang, which I guess you would get, but it's Dijon mustard, am I right? Yeah. Which wouldn't have that tang, it would have a little heat. I actually, and this is, is this whiskey? Yeah, Jim Beam. Hey, we might find a little whiskey drink for you. There we go. It reminds me of a dirty martini. Oh. No. Not it does not that it tastes like that. It's sweeter. But it reminds me of that because it has like this weird like I like I like a briny dirty martini, right? Maybe that's why I'm thinking it, because it's called a swine brine. I don't know, but I don't hate it. I think it's good. Alright. Well you can finish it's it up nice if you want. I might, I might. Wow, okay. All right. Wow. Yum, yum, yum. So I'm going to try this bite with more bite cheese. I'll just get one bite and you can have the rest. Okay. Mm. Mm. I will okay. say, Flavors and Fire hits every single event. They have the grills out there. They are literally cooking everything super fresh. That's, that's pretty good. The... I think the beef gets lost a little bit in the cheese flavor, which is I have not no a bad problem thing. with that. <laughs> um, it's got a really, it's got a lot of char on it. Nice. Which it, it's okay. I, I'd be interested in see what you think. So you taste the fire. Yeah. Taste the fire. Flavor from fire. So it is important to note it is just a slider, right? But I mean, as such, it's it's a good size sli slider. It's got a lot going on there. I love it. Nice. Oh, All right. you know what I'm really loving? For the cheese and the it. brie, the arugula. All of it. But also, there are truffle potato chips on the burger. So when you're biting it, True. it has this crunch. And you're like, what it is gives crunching a good like texture. this? Oh, and that every single bite, you get like this pop of the texture. And then the soft, sweet, delicate flavor of all those cheeses, that fondue. Can I just take a bath in that fondue? Please, that is like heaven. That'd be weird. I just want to hang out over here and be like, hey, got any more of that fondue? <laughs> like, it, that is good. <laughs> like, that fondue is good. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, like, that is good. I really think that the burger has a great flavor to it. I hear what you're saying. There's a lot going on, so the burger is not like the star, but I don't know that that's a problem for me. I have yeah. to say, I think it's I, really delicious. I think when I want a burger, I want a little bit more meaty, beefy, burgery I mean, it is flavor. A slider. I mean, that's what I like. Um, if they made this a full size burger, I would be in heaven. And I think you would get more of the beef flavor there because you could get Probably. a lot thicker. But I love it. I think the, the bun is tender. It's soft. It's really, really nice. It's not taking away. It just works, does its job <laughs> as the vehicle for you to eat everything in. But those chips. I mean, it's not that the chips, I mean, they are truffle chips, which I'm sure adds flavor in there, but that that addition of that as a texture, texture plus to it, for me, that was like, that was the little bit of the chef going, Meh, I got one more thing here I'm going to throw in there. Nice. And, and I love that. Yeah, really, really good. So this is literally just like corned beef, cheese over chips. Normally this would be on a plain house-made chip. They ran out, so they are on the truffle chips that come from the slider, which I have no problem with. Right, so I want to just try wow, this. that is a bite, Bear. That looks that good. That a good bite. Bear gets all the good bites. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh. That's his win. That right is there. a win. Yeah, the thing with you is you can always tell for real what you're thinking because you're like, I've Woo! I, yep. I, that's what I say. It's oh all in the gosh. eyebrows. He's got his happy eyebrows on. I do. They're dancing. That was, that is such a burst of flavor. Like that corned beef, you get the salty, briny. Ooh, yeah. Such good flavor from that. And then you get the sh kind of a sharp, cheesy flavor in there as well. Bit of the onions and then that texture from the chips. That is, that's a home run right there. It's hitting on all, hitting on all cylinders. That is hitting on all cylinders. And then is the, is the, is the um, corned beef tender? Yeah. Because sometimes very, you know what I mean, tender. it can be a little dry. Yep, nope. 
Oh, now we're talking. There Let's go. go. There you go. Dude, you were going to love that. Look at I that. Think you're gonna I got love the that. onion. I got the chives, the cheese. I'm excited. This was super win for me. Yeah, all the, so much flavor. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to kind of wrap your brain around it. It's such a flavor journey. That, super that, savory, which is what we love. That corned beef is holding so much flavor in it. It is the opposite of dry. It is so juicy. As soon as you saw me kind of go like this, it was the splash of that flavor was real when time, I bit into real that, time reaction. that <laughs> corned beef. Because it just went whoosh across my tongue. Mm. So good. Yeah, don't, uh, that is, I mean, That's I'm like kind of blown away. Out, I'm blown away. Having a beer, sitting with your friends, like watching a game or something. Like, this is like that kind of food like where you're just like this is like delicious it's hitting all those types of spots really really flavorful really really good another what all right i, don't, I almost want to just go home right now because like are we three for three we are right we're three for well three. we are we had a rough well, start on the truffle mac but no uh, no they've good. had to go back and i'm not i'm not three for three on that mustard whiskey look it only has to be good for somebody in your family okay So we made our way to the fry basket next, right over by the uh, under construction test track. We have the yucca fries. We have the truffle parmesan fries. Then what is the second one here, Bear? So there's a barbecue bacon fries. That's the barbecue bacon fries here. Sweet potato casserole fries. And then a sweet potato casserole fries. Yep. And the yucca fries are have a garlic cilantro aioli. Yeah, well, we'll let you start with that. Well, I love yuca fries. You do love yuca fries. All right, so let me give this a whirl. They're nice and thick. Mm. Oh, wow. All right. Hot. Crispy, soft, and then yuca always has a little bit of a, I want to say stringy, but a little more of a stringy type texture. Than like your regular potato fries. Right. And then the aioli is good. It's a really good garlic aioli. Not picking up on the cilantro, but okay. really good. Nice. Okay, only because only because it's melting the um, sweet potato fries. I'm gonna eat those first because the whipped cream has like just casserole. gone to town. Yeah. Like that's a good thing whipped cream. Yeah, it was like I don't know, she did it out of like a whipped cream thing. Oh my gosh. Mm. Huh. Oh, it's like a whipped marshmallow flavor, whipped cream, something like that. That's a nice flavor. So they brought these out of the fryer. I was watching them. Oscar the chef, he was rocking back there. Um, he definitely tossed them in something, I'm assuming like a brown sugar type situation. Then she, um, another person, drizzled them with like almost like a um a syrup a little thinner than a syrup but like a syrup and then they topped them with the whipped cream and then the walnuts so and i was picking up on all that like really really good flavors on that really nice really hot and fresh yeah i think that that's the thing that you're going to struggle with over there is that it's hard to get every fry to be the same hot fresh you know zone Wow, this one is really, really good. I mean, it's a truffle fry. It's going to be delicious. And then the bacon, what are these? Bacon? Barbecue bacon. Barbecue bacon. I'm assuming it's a ranch aioli. Definitely. Wow. It really is wild how much they are able to completely change the flavor of each of these based on like the toppings and the coatings. I mean, it's potatoes, right? Sweet potatoes have an and obvious lean, but these two couldn't taste more different from one another. The truffle fry and the barbecue, oh. um, they couldn't taste more different, but I think they're the same fry. Just tossed in a different flavoring yep. and different toppings. 
they're good. I mean, you know, it's kind of like the mac and cheese one. It's like a fun thing. It's if you fries. Hit it fresh and crisp and hot. Yep. It's gonna be hit it, good. You're gonna have a great time with it. Yeah. I'm gonna try the drink though. So I did get the grapefruit mule, which is from the same people who did. It's Boyd's and something. I'm so sorry that I'm not remembering the name off the top of my head. Um, my cotter that was from here at Coastal Eats. So this is a grapefruit mule. It does have a salted rim, but I'm not such a fan of that. I bet you like it. Mm. Nope. Oh no. Uh -oh. I don't even understand it. Well, what's supposed to be in it? It's just a grapefruit mule. With vodka? Yeah, grapefruit? it's a mule. It's a, it's a mule. It's and got vodka. Um, it just says grapefruit mule, but it tastes like a household cleaner. A what? Like a household cleaner. Oh, you shouldn't drink those at all. No, it tastes like you're not supposed to be drinking it. I'm not even kidding. Taste oh, it. Wow. Well, what, why would I want to taste that after well, that I'm just recommendation? Saying, well, I know, but just that tell me, am crazy. I crazy? Oh, let's see. All right. I mean, and I love a mule. Well, yeah, it's not good. Why is that so bad? I feel like you're being generous. Yeah. It doesn't taste, I, I've never, Usually I'll be like, okay, it's not so great, but I'll still drink it. Yeah. I don't even think I want to drink this. Like it tastes like it's not good for me to drink it. Probably not. Did do you see what I'm saying about like a household cleaner? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Like Lysol. Like it tastes like that Lysol smells. Like that perfumey, you know what I mean? Very weird. I'm sorry, not a fan. Right. You guys, if you like hey, this, buddies. tell me what I'm missing here because I love grapefruit. I mean, dude, we literally live I mean, on grapefruit and ginger and vodka. The like I tell you what, it's like my third food group. And like, I don't understand why this is not exactly everything I could ever dream of. So if you guys are familiar with this brand or what this is like, let me know what I'm missing because I almost feel like it's like, but I saw them, they poured it from a bottle. So I, I don't know what I could be missing out on. It seems like this is absolutely the, the intention on this. So for me, hard pass on this drink. Oh, here we go. Never have I ever had to do that. That makes me sad. That was horrible. Sad day. Horrible. All right, so we went over to Australia next. We have the lamb chop, which, am I, am I crazy? Or is that like the smallest lamb chop you've ever seen? Or do I, cause I don't yeah, eat lamb. They're, they're, that's about normal, I think. I, oh, I, I is don't it? Think it's, okay. It might be a little bit on the small side, but I don't think it's. It has like a mint. Exceptionally small. It's What's got it got a mint, going on? mint pesto and crushed salt and vinegar potato chips. That's what's on it. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yep, well, go ahead and give that a try. Okay. We do also have over here, you'll see Grilled yep. bushberry spiced shrimp skewer with sweet and sour vegetables that and looks... coconut chili sauce. You can smell the chili sauce Dude, when you're over there. She looks good. I'm not going to lie. Good. Look at that sauciness. Ooh. But first up, we're going to try this lamb out. You don't like today. Trash can style. Let's go. Yep. Okay. Mm. That is very good. The actual lamb meat itself, really flavorful, tender. Um, you get that mint jelly type flavor in there as well. And then that salt, fresh salt and vinegar chips on top. Sounds weird, but it's actually really good. It adds a nice little salty texture to it. Um, there's some great flavor. Nice. It's delicious. Wow, like, really? Yeah. I. You know what? I got to tell you, when they handed it to you, I was like, I don't know, that does not look Well, you're like, lambist. I don't eat lamb, but I just thought it looked kind of like pitiful and not exciting, but... Oh, it's delicious. Your review, I mean, but again, I, right, I don't eat lamb, look so... Look at the bottom side, you can see how it's cooked. It's kind of like not too well done, Yeah, so that's good. Wow. It's really good. 
Nice. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. That's great. So next we have this gorgeous shrimp. I'm not going to lie. Skewer. It is like coated in this sauce. All right. Looks like tail on. Yeah. So because of, oh, because of, I could probably do it with a fork, but look at that chili, that ch sweet chili sauce. I mean, look at this guy. So much flavor. Wow. So much heat. Woo! Heat, huh? Wow, I'm impressed. All That's right, some thanks. wow. I mean it's not like can't do it, but I do a lot of heat. I, I bet people are jumping around freaking out. Mm. Really? Well, I'm excited to give it a try. Wow, it was very good. This is from the noodles, right? The noodle booth. Mm -hmm. Noodle exchange. Ramen with shaved beef, shiitake mushroom, pickled carrots, daikon radish, shaved spicy peppers, and soy egg in a citrus sesame broth. Then a Thai shrimp with rice noodles, shiitake mushrooms, and basil in coconut curry broth. So that looks good too. So starting off here with the, uh, can you talk me through it? So the the uh, shrimp and rice noodles in the uh, curry broth. So what? what I try to do sometimes, or all the time, is just build a bite and kind of get everything together. Dip it in the broth. Get a nice scoop of broth. I'm going to try to get a shrimp as well. So that one I might Ambitious. bite sim separately. I would bite because of the tail on it. Yeah. So... Hmm. All right, well, hmm. the noodle's a lot stiffer than I would typically expect, but okay. it's got a different, interesting flavor. Let me try one of these shrimps. This one sounds like a more delicate type flavor. This is, what is it again? Uh, okay. It is, and it's a coconut milk curry broth. Okay, okay. So it's a, kind of a subtle sweet curry type broth in it so you see how cloudy it is yeah from the coconut milk and stuff oh, it's all right i think i don't think i would get this again no but it's not bad it's not bad but just kind of all right not bad yeah based on there you go some broth go get some broth in there. right here we go It's a really interesting collection of flavors. It's very good, very savory, very, um, got a red pepper in there, so it's a little bit of spice, got a little bit of kick. Um, really good. The broth is, you know, beef broth, really yeah. salty. Um, it's a good bowl. It's pretty good. A lot better than the shrimp one. You'd go beef over the shrimp. Yeah. There you go. Oh, sorry, Annabelle. Wow, okay. All right, so. You were giving it, you know, like first impressions were pretty good off of building All a right, really yeah. primo bite. Yeah. But in further evaluation. It just, it's, it hits a little flat. I mean, it's not really, um, it's not really what you want in ramen. I, I don't know how to say it. I think the noodles are a little bit of a miss. The texture is a little off. Um, and there's, while it is a savory salt flavor i think it's a very flat salt flavor just like salt yeah yeah so, no dimension to it right no dimension like a lot of what i like about some of the asian soups is the broth is like like if you get a good pho it's a it's a 24-hour bone broth with all these herbs and spices and different things that just create these depths of flavor within the broth yeah this broth doesn't have that depth you're just not getting that experience yeah well, and I mean, I but, feel like it's an ambitious try. Yep. Annabella had the most scathing review. She does. What'd you say? She, she said, said microwave ramen is yeah, better. Yeah, that's, that's top. She said top ramen. It tastes like top ramen. Ouch. And I like ramen. I know, yeah. 
Yeah, we are very excited for this. I'm a big ramen person. Oh, uh, you guys love ramen. No, no doubt. You're going to be trying ramen for the first time. This is going to ruin it. Oh, do you think? I feel like it's a little bit more. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it's my turn. I think this is a pass. Oh, it's become a, a full pass. That's a bummer because this yep. was the thing Manny was for both. looking forward to. But. What do you do? Here we are, Mexico. We made it to La Cava. Get our uh, note the empty cups. <laughs> yes, they were quite good. We ended up getting the uh, we've had it before, the Paloma and La Paloma, which is a mezcal Paloma, which is our go-to. This one, when they're busy, they make them pre-made, so they're not yeah. mixed on site. Which I don't. I think I'm just assuming they're not as good. But this one was actually quite good. It went down it was easy. Tasty. Yeah, it was a tasty drink. Um, I don't know that I caught a lot of the mezcal, but I think no. it was tasty. It was fine. However, it was fine. what was awesome was that it was the quinceanera of La Cava. Yes. Happy quinceanera. Today was actually the 15th birthday. The quinceanera. We were there. We took a little picture. It was really cute. They we had, had a all special decorated. Decree. We didn't get it. Yeah, I didn't even. You know what? He mentioned that. And honestly, one of the guys behind us in line was chatting with us, which was great. Yeah. And I completely forgot. I forgot. I will, I'm going to tell you, it was pretty high chance it was going to be sweet. Yeah. It was yeah. probably going to be sweet. But what if it wasn't? What if it was really good? I don't know. Anyway, we still got to go to Mexico and get the food. So we're heading there now. Let's go see what they got. They never disappoint us with the food. Sometimes nope. the drinks. We're going to try out. There's a mezcal drink I don't there. think we'll try it out. We're not going to try the mezcal drink. He decided no. Earlier, he was leaning yes. Let's just see where this takes us. I don't know what's going on. We are in Mexico. This is the Flauta de Barbacoa. So it's fried tortillas filled with barbacoa beef topped with salsa verde, crema mexicana, and queso fresco. Also the tostada de camarones, so the tempura battered shrimp atop a fried corn tortilla with guacamole cabbage, chipotle aioli, diced mango, and chili lime powder. And then last, but well, maybe least, we'll see. It's a dessert, pan de elote, traditional Mexican cornbread topped with chocolate sauce and queso fresco. And it looks Dude, like a raspberry. It's it like looks really chocolate good. Chocolate lava. And actual corn bits. I think this looks absolutely delicious. Okay, Manuelito is gonna take on this flauta. Now I will say, while this is beautiful, this is literally like I'm going to say half of a normal flauta. It's like a sad flauta. Well, I mean, size-wise. It looks... It looks I smashed. Mean, I think that the, the um, salsa verde looks good, the cotija cheese, the crema. You got, you know, it's very well presented. Oh, I see Manny's going to go ahead and take that radish. Right. <laughs> Damn right, he says. That's Darn right. Skippy. <laughs> Darn Skippy. I'm going for it. I'm first. I mean, I'm going to make sure my bite is life, yo. Well, that's what you got to do. You want to try to get the good bite. Yeah, definitely get the, the salsa and everything in there. A little bit of the crema. Wow, that's pretty interesting. So the tortilla is well fried, like meaning fried perfectly and really yeah. well done. It's like a light fry, kind of crisp, a little bit of, a little soft. It's got a good thickness to it. Um, it's also verde and the uh, cheese and everything add a really fresh, bright, like limey type flavor to it. And then the barbacoa is it's in there. It's not very dominant flavor, but you can taste it. Um, well, you also got the okay. end bite. Yeah, I got the end bite. Yeah, and but it's pretty good. I think it's, it's, it's ah, well, let, let me give this puppy a try and see. Which one? Yeah, you you got to build a bite. I'm building. You a can't bite, be. Baby. I'm not messing around. Half assing it here. I don't know. Do you really think I'm gonna do that? Let's see what kind of bite builder we are. I put I got the salsa verde, I've got the cotija cheese, I got the lettuce, I got the barbacoa, the torta itself. Alright, that, that looks like a good bite. That's like the middle of the road. Let's go. Middle of it. 
I think I got the primo bite. I think you did. You're probably going to get a lot more flavor from the beef and the barbacoa. Mm. I really like how fresh the flavors are from the salsa verde. <laughs> from the salsa verde and the cheeses. It's a really good combination. You underestimated when you said the fry, like the cook was right. Yeah. No. I was trying to describe oh. it. No, it was like I had what I thought was going to be soft because it was the center. Like the ends, you know how it is. The ends are a little bit more crisp. Um, then the middle is going to be a little less because of the meat and everything. It was like crisp, light, like a little, like the perfect little chip crisp. How do they do that when they're putting out that many? Did we just get lucky? I don't know, but let me tell you, that was delicious. Annabelle's comment was, whoa, that was delicious. And it was the perfect taste. Like that was a taste and it was amazing. Plated beautifully, put together really well. Mexico. There you go. Bringing it. Flautas. Yes. Size doesn't matter. <laughs> Next we have the tostada. This is interesting to me because these are going to be, what is this called? Tempura How breaded shrimp? Yeah, I know tempura, it is tempura breaded, breaded, breaded shrimp breaded. on a Mexico tostada. I wouldn't expect that. Nope. I don't know. I wouldn't expect that, but the shrimp are small. And it's got, yep. But the tostada is looking good. There's a good amount of the crema, everything going on in here. Manny, I'm going to let you take first bite. I think this one right here is looking primo. Oh, oh, oh. I tell you what, that crisp was there. I heard all that crunchy crisp. Oh. This is what, can I tell you what I think you think? I'm going to read the eyebrows. Can I do an eyebrow reading? Yep. So, this is what I think the eyebrows are saying. They were like, you know, that was fair. That was good. The flauta, the flauta was better. I feel like the uh, shrimp was lost a little bit in the tempura batter, but the toppings were really, really good. And, uh, yeah, the crunch was nice, but we'll see. All right, how did I do? Not bad. Oh, did I read the eyebrows? Yeah, I think it was pretty good. You know what I do like is there's a lot of fried in there. Yeah. So the tostada's fried, the tempura batter shrimp is fried, but it's, it's, you can tell it's fresh grease. It's not like yeah. over fried old grease that you taste everything. Yeah, that burnt grease, yeah. That thing forever. It's really well done. And then the cabbage is nice and fresh. Um, but yeah, I think the eyebrows don't lie, man. You're not going to try that shrimp? I am going to try it, but um, my child stole it, so. <laughs> All right, this is like the darkest chocolate I have ever seen as a sauce. It's almost black. Yeah. All right, this is going to be interesting. My Why, is that dark chocolate? It's dark. It's not um, bitter. bitter dark. All right, I'm going to go ahead over here. Yep, take a bite. Oh, it's it's very moist. Okay, it's very moist. It's a cornbread cake. Okay, so a pan de elote. So it's got big hunks of actual corn kernels in it. It's got chocolate with cheese. Yeah, here's your cheese here. I think it's just the cotija type cheese. All right, let's see. Thinking we got a apple spinning wheel right here. Trying to take it all in. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh-oh. Well, wow, that's so weird. It's literally like I either love it or I don't like it. Hold on. Let me but try one more bite. There should be no middle ground. No, because it's a really complex flavor. Let's see if we can split the gap here between love it or absolutely hate it. No, I actually hate it. But oh. All right, I think I understand it now. Oh. The cake itself, love the flavor of, especially the actual, when you get an actual corn kernel. The, but the, the, the pan is actually kind of reading like a tres leches. It's very, very wet. Oh. Not undercooked wet, but as though they, they've made it wet after the fact. And that is... Um, I'm not getting any flavor from that wet. It's just wet. Huh. So I don't like the texture of the cake, but I love the chocolate. I love the cheese. I love the corn. I love that there's a texture issue. Okay. That's what's holding me back from going full on in with it. 
But I will say this, you have to try it. Because I bet you anything, everybody in your party will have different feelings on it. You might need to, yeah, mmm, right? Like the, it like kicks off, the flavors are great. And they're complex, right? I think this is very good. I don't think there's any ambiguity whatsoever. Oh, there you go. That's what uh, I'm saying. I think everybody's gonna feel different. I really do like it. Like, yeah. I think the, you think that, but well, I warned you about the wetness of the bread. About the wetness, because typically to me, cornbread is usually dry, kind of crumbly. Right. Kind of, even a good cornbread. Um, it's kind of got that dry, crumbling type. But when you said it's moist and tres leches type. Yeah. You had an ex really you you got to expect it, yeah. So I didn't have that surprise of textures, which can be off putting. If you're like expecting exactly. A and you get C. <laughs> That's good. How's that? I like it and don't like it. It's different. It tastes di uh, it tastes funny. Tastes funny. It it's like cornbread texture. Yeah. It's like soggy cornbread yep. texture. Don't yep. taste like cornbread though. Do you like the chocolate? Yeah. You like to say elote? Pan de elote. Thumbs up or thumbs down from Birdie? Oh. Somewhere in between. So there you go. So we've brought in our special on-location reporter today to discuss this concoction. We are here at the Muppets Lab, and I don't know about you guys, but last year this kind of ruled the festival. We're going to see if there have been any changes, and honestly, we never had it last year. We have brought our on-location reporter. She's going to take it down. The pickle master, our local picker, pickle, our pickle picker upper, our excuse me, pickle picker upper. The our local pickle picker upper, Annabella Barrera is here to report for you on the pickle milkshake. Let's go. That tastes like a vanilla milkshake. Tell us. It tastes like a vanilla milkshake. <laughs> it's not the only you like it, it doesn't taste anything else. Yeah, I, I may have made my wrong. Uh, so I'm very elegant. Okay. Pickle flavoring comes in at the very end. Like the initial taste, very standard milkshake, maybe a mint, maybe vanilla a little bit, but then at the very end, it pickle kind of touches in just a little, leans in a little. The dill. Or pickle. Pickle. Okay, pickle. Dill. Dill flavor. Oh, I think it's good. Mm -hmm. I like it. I, yeah. I think it tastes like it tastes like what the dill pickle scratch um, garbage patch kid or whatever you know what I'm saying. It's like a, it tastes like a garbage patch kid. Dude, you were not supposed to eat those kids as a, as a, a card. Or a, a, eat those cards as a kid. No, not garbage pail kid. I got that. You weren't supposed you. to eat those cards. There was like a circle sticker, scratch and stick. It was a dill pickle, right? You scratch it, you'd smell it, right? I didn't eat those stickers either. No, you didn't eat them, but like when you smelt it, it left this taste in your mouth because it was so strong. This is exactly that taste. And you know what's interesting? I don't like milkshakes or pickles. I I love pickle. This is good. You know, it's got just enough of that thing that makes it interesting. All right, there we go. I understand what you're saying because a lot of people have said that that it tastes just like vanilla. 
I'm getting a lot of just, but it's like fresh dill. Not getting vinegar. She's the chosen one. Which would make it gross. Unappealing. Milk and vinegar together does not. Oh, no, I, I try to avoid milk and vinegar. I want to do. But just dill, because dill, I love. Dude, how much do I love dill? Like, I love dill. You like dill? dill? If this was a Havarti dill milkshake? I, oh, that would be incredible. They should do that. Okay, what a great first day that of food and wine. We are now, I think, even more encouraged about the rest of what there's going to be to find. What we tried was really, really good. Yeah, I, mean, I most of it, uh, you know, some were a little bit off the mark, but nothing too mm -hmm. terrible, except the ramen, and the noodles. That was kind of uh, off the mark, but that was a bummer. That was disappointing. Swing and a miss, but. There were more swing and hits than there were misses, and that was awesome. Yeah. I think they did a really great job. The first day is always a little bit like, whoa, what is going on? But we had a lot of great food, some great drinks, some great wine, and we are even more encouraged to come back and show you guys. Oh, hi! Ooh. I love that they still have the lights. Look how cool they look. Those are cool. We are even more encouraged to come back and show you even more food and wine and things that we're really excited to enjoy. Anyway, so we are so excited <laughs> about tonight. Thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed yeah, tonight, yeah, come back and join us again. Hit that subscribe button. Look at this little baby over here. She says, like it, please. <laughs> and we'll see you guys on the next one. All right. Bye. Bye.